morning everybody. Uh, we're going out on the Angava Game Reserve to explore and see what we can find. Um, anything from uh, antelope to lions, rhinos. Um, this morning is going to be all about exploring, seeing what we can find. We'll stop, we'll um, view anything we'll find and talk more about it. Right, a great start already, just uh, right from the camp. Uh, the first uh, opening, the first plains, we got some zebras right here, uh, which are the plain zebras. We have two different species of zebras here in uh, the reserve, which is the plain zebras that you see here, also known as the brachial zebras, and uh, the other species would be the Hartman's mountain zebra. So starting off uh, with the difference between the two species, as you can see, these ones that you see here are the plain zebras, and uh, the difference uh, is that if you look at the legs of the plain zebras, they are more white compared to the mountain zebra. The mountain zebras have uh, black and thicker black and white lines, so the, the black lines of, of the mountain zebra are actually more pronounced. So from a distance, if you get to see a mountain zebra, they have more darker legs compared to the, compared to the plain zebras. The other difference is that the, the plain zebras, as you can see this zebra right here, the black lines coming from the back, uh, from the backbone, goes right through down. They connect at the belly. And the mountain zebras have more of a white belly. So what you guys see here is that it's early morning. What they usually do uh, in the night is uh, they go up in open plains like this. Most of the plain uh, animals like springbok, uh, zebras, uh, oryx and so on would, for safety reasons, would uh, sleep just in the middle of the, of, the, of the open, of the plains, just for safety reasons. This just gives them a high chance of seeing when danger is uh, approaching. Uh, and also you would see that uh, they like to mix up, like zebras are known to stay mostly with uh, with the blue wildebeest. This is uh, for a couple of reasons, like uh, for safety numbers. You know, if you are alone, the chances of you getting killed is high because uh, you will be the only target. All right, guys, so it was a great start, a uh, great sighting. Uh, thanks to these guys to allow us to talk about them. Very relaxed, so we'll just leave them to do and go on with their normal activities. Uh, we'll just proceed and see what we can find further. Oh, beautiful. You can see the mother and the calf. Wow. What you can notice already is that these are white rhinos. Um, just by looking at the, um, I mean the, the, the body shape, but especially the mouth part, you can see that very flat square compared to the uh, the black rhino. Actually, uh, they just moved out of uh, into into the underbrush, covered now. But um, what happened was the um, the calf left first, almost like she's in front. And that's typical of the uh, white rhino, is the calf always leads the mother. You can just see her uh, front end of her head. White rhinos have um, much longer front horns and a shorter uh, back horn compared to the black rhino, which have almost equally uh, length horns. They also have a much, uh, the white rhinos have a longer head or, or skull which is quite lower or held lower to the ground which makes it easier for them to graze. And um, as she's grazing, uh, they normally feed taking grass off in an arc. Um, it's believed that these rhinos have evolved on the African continent, hence the fact that they've got the longer skull, the flattened mouth part moved out onto the open um, African plains. So a lot of uh, a place where they defecate, 
um, you find that that could be a midden and middens are a great place for interactions uh, not only physical interactions with them all being there but just the scent um, that's left there for others to come and investigate and see who was there so with these middens sometimes um, leading up to water holes um, it's a great place also for the male to come and check the status of any female um, follows them and then also stays with that female once she's in heat if he gets uh, that scent Behind me we've got uh, the majestic giraffe, um, two big bulls, uh, of course why I'm saying they're males is I can see that they're slightly darker, the, the spots on their bodies are slightly darker and if you also um, have a closer look their horns are thicker and um, the one on the left hand side you can see um, actually both of them it seems that they're their left um, ossicone or horn is worn down and it means um, that males fight a lot and over time uh, that kind of wears down the horns. These are the tallest mammals and um, perfectly adapted to browse and forage on the top uh, sections of the trees uh, getting all the nutrient rich leaves. You'll see the giraffes using their tongue. It's almost a uh, 40 centimeter long tongue which uh, is prehensile. It comes out, grabs whatever it selects, pulls it into its mouth and of course they love acacias. The giraffe has got very viscous uh, saliva and this helps the, um, the spines glide off of its tongue so it can accurately select the leaves and pull it in. Seems that they've had a little bit of um, what they needed and now moving off, not spending too much time as they can sense that the tannin levels are rising. Um, keep, keep an eye on him and we'll, we'll then just try to make our way there. Over. We've just come across a uh, bull elephant, which is really exciting. It seems like he's uh, relaxed, um, might cross the road if we're lucky. Oh, look at that. Those tusks are a little bit worn down, uh, but uh, that's pretty much what happens um, with elephants that live in this area, is that it's it's quite um, harsh and dry, um, also not a lot of nutrient rich food and some minerals lacking which makes the tusk uh, brittle and they wear off. These guys can grow I mean, on shoulder height um, almost to about three meters. Also see the color um, is caused by the mud on the reserve and mud is also used to cool the, uh, the skin when they are out in the midday sun. But he's been feeding probably the uh, most of the night into the early morning hours slowly heading to some sort of a uh, water source. But uh, very relaxed Those big ears are also used as a temperature regulator, almost like a vehicle's radiator. Um, if you see them flapping their ears, um, this means that uh, it's, it's doing what he does best, is cooling himself off. Sometimes if you get a glance behind the ear, you'll see the lining of uh, those big blood vessels that uh, actually circulates almost all the blood in its body. Guys, we just stopped for a very beautiful bird here uh, called the lilac breasted roller. So normally 
uh, we actually have two different species of, of rollers in this region. The lilac breasted roller, which is uh, the one we have right now, and the, uh, the purple roller. These guys uh, feed mostly on insects, butterflies and all different types of in insects. And occasionally uh, there has been records of for them also feeding on on uh, small or baby birds like help helpless birds and so on. And uh, yeah, I actually have a funny story about them. Just some uh, traditional beliefs uh, is that the not the lilac breasted roller but the purple roller is uh, traditionally if, if they fly in front of ladies making a quacking sound. It, uh, it is believed that uh, one of the ladies are pregnant and she's uh, keeping it as a secret. So, yeah, if for one day you see a, la a purple roller flying in front of uh, your girlfriend, uh, she'd be very suspicious. Hey? <laughs> uh, we have a big elephant bull here that you see. He's just feeding slightly, heading towards the watering hole. So what happens is that these guys are highly dependent on water. So what they do is for almost uh, over 20 hours, they would be feeding. And uh, as you can see, the temperatures are now starting, uh, it's around about uh, close to 10 o'clock. The temperatures are now heating up. So uh, slightly feeding slowly, they would uh, head towards the watering hole. If you look at the forehead. The males have more of a round forehead compared to the females. The females are more, the forehead is more pointed, almost like a 90 degree angle. Females are much more smaller in size. Then as you can see, he only has one task. The task of the male is much more uh, longer and thicker compared to the females. Females have more uh, thinner and shorter tasks. These guys feed for over 20 hours just feeding. And um, this is because their digestive system is not very good. Uh, from what they feed, almost some like plus minus 30 to 35 percent get uh, digested. These guys have a very, very important role in, in the ecosystem. So even when they eat like that, uh, when they poo, it fertiles the soil. And uh, you will see them a lot of times breaking trees and so on. It is, although you might think it's deforestation, I think it's very important that they do that because the more they, be, they break big trees, the more uh, it will give them a, uh, the grass to grow. Just minimizes the competition of light with the grass. I'm not saying they should uh, break down all the big trees. <laughs> what a great end to a wonderful day. And um, just uh, tune in tomorrow for another adventure. So take care and uh, hope to see you soon.